morning. As we prepare to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, our parish family extends a prayerful welcome to visitors from throughout our diocese to their cathedral church, and to all who are gathered with us as our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Please join in singing the processional hymn, Come Holy Ghost, which can be found in your bulletin. Come Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us, recall the wondrous work of our creation, 
and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome. Both the Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Spirit, Lord divine, come from hearts of heaven and shine, come with blessed radiance bright. Come, O Father of the poor, come, O treasured gifts and dark.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning to all of you again. Welcome, especially those joining us live stream. Especially I want to welcome Liza, Mary, and Marcella, who are going to receive their first Holy Communion today. It's a good example for us. They're sitting there. You can see them. They're wearing their little white dresses. Uh, it's wonderful. They can be such a great example for us how to prepare ourselves to receive Holy Communion. Uh, not just the external appearances, but inside to strive to grow in purity as they have uh, with them this morning in such a special way. Hypoxia is a condition that many pilots can experience when deprived of oxygen for any length of time. This oxygen starvation, as it's called, can lead to disorientation and inability to read instruments and eventually blacking out. The Air Force has developed a training exercise for its pilots to demonstrate the effects of hypoxia. Students are paired off in an altitude simulation chamber. With oxygen masks on, they are taken to simulated conditions of 30,000 feet. Then one student removes his or her mask for a few minutes and begins to answer simple questions on a sheet of paper. Suddenly, their partners force the oxygen masks back onto the trainee who was doing the writing. After a few gulps of normal air, each writer is astounded at what he sees on the paper he's writing on. The first few lines may be legible, but the rest of their responses are unreadable. One minute earlier, the pilot was absolutely certain he had written his answers in perfectly legible script. In reality, he was on the verge of losing total consciousness. And remarkably, he wasn't even aware he was blacking out. Today, we celebrate Pentecost, the celebration of the outpouring and sending of the Holy Spirit of God into our world and into our very lives right now. In the scriptures, one of the ways that the Spirit of God is depicted is as air. I'm sure we remember, huh? The Spirit comes down on the apostles like a driving wind. On Easter night, Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on the church just like he breathed life into his creation of man and woman in the book of Genesis. The breath 
the air of God is what gives life direction and clarity. The air of God breathes life into us. This air, this Holy Spirit of God is God himself living in us and transforming us to live as people of faith. The Spirit of God is like oxygen. Without it in the air, we black out fast and we don't even know that it's happening to us. My dear people, without breathing into our spiritual lives, into our souls, our hearts, deep breaths of the air of God, the Spirit of God, we soon lose a spiritual awareness. And the real danger, huh, is that we don't even know what's happening to us. We don't even know it. Pentecost reminds us that daily, every day, we need to spend some time quiet with our God in prayer, even if it's a few seconds, saying, come Holy Spirit, breathing his air deeply, his very life into our hearts. The Holy Spirit of God has been given to us. Breathe the breath of God. It's the only air that keeps us aware of the deepest realities. May we pray often. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us pray that the Holy Spirit may continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe. For Christians everywhere, as we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to work more earnestly for unity in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our world, in our communities, and in our families, that the Holy Spirit will grant us peace in our days, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the end of civil violence and destruction, for government officials and civil servants, and all who are charged with the good of its citizens, may they be true to their calling to serve the people in truth and in justice, 
Let us pray to the Lord. For all our sisters and brothers who will receive the sacraments of matrimony, Eucharist, and confirmation, and welcome into the Catholic Church this weekend, may they always follow your gospel and give witness to you by their holy and faithful lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer the loss of a job and of future work due to the effects of the pandemic, may they find a positive resolution to their employment and financial difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of the sick and for those who will die today, may they receive comfort and healing in their time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let the brightness of your glory shine upon us, almighty God, so that the Holy Spirit, light of light, may strengthen the hearts of those who are reborn through your grace. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son, this same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth to profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh uh-huh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing, Sing We of the Blessed Mother, which can be found in your bulletin. Sing We of the Blessed Mother. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. That's a good idea. For the final blessing on this would be the feast, the visitation of the Blessed Mother in the end of this month, uh, ded dedicated to her in such a special way. Let's pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia.